So welcome back to Basis Physics Classroom. अब हम लोग इन द बढ़ गया मोना चैप्टर अंदर बारे में इधर सर्कुलर मोशन आना। I'll be briefly describing the main things that you have to remember in the chapter circular motion. Okay. And towards the end, कुछ ना दोनों special cases उड़े ना मुझे गाना। Okay. So circular motion ही कुछ बारे में बो। रेंडे टाइप्स ऑफ सर्कुलर मोशन ही कुछ नहीं लगा मंसला करना। और ना non-uniform circular motion रेंडे uniform circular motion. Okay. नमक आ गया हूँ। Uniform circular motion लिख रहा है बुआ। Uniform circular motion. Now, इस circular motion uniform आयलम शरी, non uniform आयलम शरी, पढ़ी क्या नाम इंगिल? You have to learn about three terms. One, we call it angular displacement. What do you call it? Angular displacement. Now, angular displacement means suppose I have a circular path like this, an object is moving along the path. Now, angular displacement is actually the angle swept by the radius vector. Swept in the work out of each other. The angle swept by the radius vector when it is moving from one point to the other. So, angular displacement is actually what? It is the angle swept by the radius vector when it moves from one point to another. Okay. Now, angular displacement is generally represented here theta which is done. Angular displacement. Okay. And the unit for angular displacement is radians. What is the unit for angular displacement? It is radian. Okay. Right. That's the representation for that. Now, once you know about angular displacement, the second very important term is angular velocity. The second term is angular velocity. Okay. Represented by omega. Represented by omega. E omega is a familiar term for you. Well, I'll tell you omega or not. Here the angular velocity omega is equal to d theta by dt. d theta by dt is equal to d by dt of theta. What is that? It's the rate of change of angular displacement. Apo angular velocity is equal to it is the rate of change of angular displacement. Okay. E omega is equal to v by r. Omega is also equal to v by r. Omega is also equal to v by r, where v is the linear velocity and r is the radius. Or omega is also equal to v by r, where v is the linear velocity and r corresponds to the radius. Okay, so omega is equal to v by r. Fine. So omega is equal to d theta by dt or d by dt of theta, and omega is also equal to v by r. Okay. Now this omega can also be written in terms of the so-called time period. So omega can also be written like this. Omega is equal to 2 pi by t or this is equal to 2 pi f. Now time period and this t is known as a time period. It is a time taken to complete one rotation. It is a time taken to complete one circular motion. And then another time period in the variable. And f corresponds to the frequency, the number of cycles per second. Frequency is the number of cycles or number of rotations per second. That is the frequency in the frequency. So remember these formulas corresponding to that of angular velocity. That is the angular displacement, theta, angle swept by the radius vector. Now the angular velocity, omega. Now the unit for omega is radians per second. What is the unit of omega? Radians per second. Unit for omega is radians per second. Okay, I'm going to try. Right. Abo namla angular displacement varan yo, angular velocity varan. Abo omega in the varan in the quantity here, it has a direction also. It has a direction also. And the direction of omega is same as the direction of the next term, angular acceleration. And that angular acceleration represented by alpha now when the object is moving in this path we do anti-clockwise at object move on angle we can actually make use of the right hand rule thumb rule to find the direction of omega or that of alpha i'm curling my fingers in the direction in which the object is moving object move in the direction and curling my fingers the thumb gives the direction of omega or alpha 
which means omega and alpha is actually along the axis is actually along the axis of rotation so i hold my the fingers like this curling my fingers in the direction of motion of the object and thumb gives a direction of omega and alpha okay screw rule is namakku adu kandupidikkan okay anyone you can remember now the unit for angular acceleration is radians per second square radians per second square now but the omega is d theta by dt right and this alpha is equal to d omega by dt what is alpha equal to d omega by dt or the time rate of change of angular velocity the time rate of change of angular velocity we call it as angular acceleration alpha so alpha is equal to d omega by dt right ini mattoru formula ude edunnane alpha is equal to omega we already know idaanu nareyam alle so alpha is equal to d square by dt square the second order derivative of angular displacement angular acceleration is also equal to the second order derivative of angular displacement appo nammal angular displacement padichu angular velocity padichu angular acceleration parane right now alpha ne you can actually express in terms of the tangential acceleration also okay and that according to that we can write alpha is equal to a t by r r is the radius alpha is equal to a t by r a t means a subscript t appa tangential acceleration r okay ad endana i will tell you right now now before tell, uh, going into all those details let me tell you the two different types of motion appa na adhave parayum രണ്ട് ടൈപ്സ് ഓഫ് സർക്കുലർ മോഷൻ ആണ് നമുക്കുള്ളത് അല്ലെ ഏതൊക്കെയായിരുന്നു വൺ വാസ് യൂണിഫോം സർക്കുലർ മോഷൻ ആൻഡ് സെക്കൻഡ് വൺ വാസ് നോൺ യൂണിഫോം സർക്കുലർ മോഷൻ അല്ലെ നാ വിൻ യു ടോക്ക് അബൌട്ട് യൂണിഫോം സർക്കുലർ മോഷൻ ദ ഫസ്റ്റ് തിങ് യു ഹാവ് ടു റിമെമ്പർ എസ് ഇതൊരു സർക്കുലർ മോഷൻ ആണ് വെൻ എൻ ഒബ്ജെക്ട് ഇസ് മൂവിംഗ് ഇൻ എ സർക്കുലർ പാർ അറ്റ് ഈച്ച് ആൻഡ് എവറി സിംഗിൾ പോയിന്റ് ഇറ്റ്സ് വെലോസിറ്റി വിൽ ബി ചേഞ്ച് വൈ because the direction will be changing alle right? velocity is a vector quantity but here at each and every single point at each and every single point the velocity suppose this point a this is point b okay so it's each and every single point the velocity the direction is given by the tangent drawn to the point appo oru point ilum velocity maarikondirikku appo uniform circular motion ennu parayanamengil we cannot say it in terms of velocity because it is always changing alle right? so uniform circular motion means in uniform circular motion the speed is remaining a constant the speed is remaining a constant in uniform circular motion a uniform circular motion anengil the speed is remaining a constant speed is remaining a constant right now suppose we are supposed to find the change in velocity രണ്ട് പോയിന്റ്സ് ഉണ്ട് എ ബി ഉണ്ട് അല്ലെ സപ്പോസ് വി ആർ സപ്പോസ് ടു ഫൈൻഡ് ദ ചേഞ്ച് ഇൻ വെലോസിറ്റി ഹൗ ഡു യു ഫൈൻഡ് ദ ചേഞ്ച് ഇൻ വെലോസിറ്റി ദ ചേഞ്ച് ഇൻ വെലോസിറ്റി ഡെൽറ്റ വി ഇസ് ഗിവൺ ബൈ ഓർത്ത് വെക്കണം ചേഞ്ച് ഇൻ വെലോസിറ്റി ഇസ് ഗിവൺ ബൈ എങ്ങനെ ചേഞ്ച് ഇൻ വെലോസിറ്റി എഴുതും ഓക്കെ സോ ഹൗ ഡു യു ഫൈൻഡ് ദ ചേഞ്ച് ഇൻ വെലോസിറ്റി ചേഞ്ച് ഇൻ വെലോസിറ്റി വിൽ ബി ഇവിടെ വി വൺ ആണ് ഇവിടെ വി ടു ആണെങ്കിൽ വെക്ടേഴ്സ് റൈറ്റ് സോ വി വൺ മൈനസ് വി ടു കറസ്പോണ്ട്സ് ടു ദ ചേഞ്ച് ഇൻ വെലോസിറ്റി നാ ഹൗ ഡു ഇവാലുവേറ്റ് ദിസ് two vectors adding or subtraction how do you do that engana cheyum we actually use root of v1 square plus v2 square minus 2 v1 v2 cos theta right so this can be also written like this root of v1 square plus v2 square minus 2 v1 v2 cos theta so if you know the value of theta you can actually find what is the change in velocity here fine so in a uniform circular motion there is a change in velocity but the speed is remaining a constant the speed is remaining a constant and hence we call it as a uniform circular motion and here since the speed is remaining a constant we define an acceleration there ar we define an acceleration known as the radial acceleration or we also call it as by ac 
which is the centripetal acceleration. Both are actually the same thing, okay? So radial acceleration or centripetal acceleration. Now, since there is a change in the direction there, we can define an acceleration term there, which is AR, the radial or the centripetal acceleration, right? And this value AR or AC is given by V square by R. The radial acceleration, it's an acceleration directed towards the center. Radial acceleration is directed towards the center and AR is equal to what? V square by R. So AR is equal to V square by R. Now, we have learned about Newton's laws and everything. Right? Newton's second law, which what is the force equal to? F is equal to MA, right? So since an object, when an object is moving in a circular path, with a uniform speed, we have an acceleration, the centripetal acceleration. We also have a force known as the centripetal force Fc. Or you can call it Fr. Okay, no problem. That's equal to Ma. So here it is M V square by R. The centripetal force here it is equal to Fc is equal to M V square by R. But we already know what is omega, right? Omega is equal to V by R. So what is V from here? It's omega. So we can write the centripetal force Fc is equal to M omega square R. What is the centripetal force Fc equal to? Fc is equal to M omega square R. Okay. So we were analyzing a uniform circular motion. We have said what is the change in velocity. If there is an acceleration known as, known as centripetal or radial acceleration and a force. And this force is directed towards the center. The force is directed towards the center. And this is known as a center seeking. In the, uh, in the way, it is a center seeking force or it is a centripetal force. Okay. So in uniform circular motion, uh, we have defined the centripetal force. Clear? Right. Now let's move on to the next one. Non-uniform circular motion. Okay. So non-uniform circular motion. Now, when you talk about non-uniform circular motion, like uh, we mentioned in the previous case, it was like the object was moving at a constant speed, but the velocity was keeping on changing because there is a change in the direction. In non-uniform circular motion, the velocity is changing. That's the same as uniform circular motion, right? So, but here, the speed is also changing. In non-uniform circular motion, in non-uniform circular motion, the speed is not a constant. The speed is not a constant. It is changing. Speed is constant. Allah. Non-uniform circular motion speed is change. You don't regular on it. It's not a constant. Okay. And here, since there is a change in the value of the speed, number of acceleration will define gene. A T. We call it tangential acceleration. In the volume, we call it AT, tangential acceleration. But AT defines in the motion la non-uniform circular motion la. Uniform circular motion la no. Okay. But non-uniform circular motion la we are defining AT, which is known as a tangential acceleration. AT is equal to dv by dt. You know what is dv by dt? And the, the, the rate of change of velocity. We are defining a term known as tangential acceleration. And in that tangential acceleration, it is the rate of change of velocity. Okay. And remember that one object epo or circular motion poyalum. Whether it is uniform circular motion or let it be non-uniform circular motion. AR or is he? Who is that? Centripetal acceleration centripetal acceleration okay and this is equal to what m v square by r right? formula omega square r okay so we have at we have ac now at name alpha name you'll be able to relate because at is actually equal to alpha cross r Cross product of alpha and r. Or we can write this is equal to alpha r. And like So alpha r and then alpha direction. It is along the axis. Right? Radius. 
and the perpendicular right under we can write at is equal to alpha r okay now ab namaku centripetal acceleration eludi tangential eludi but and for an object undergoing a non uniform circular motion we have a centripetal acceleration here yeah. alle right. centripetal acceleration and we have a tangential acceleration we have a tangential acceleration now for air und at und right so we should have what we should have a net acceleration a net endu venam a net acceleration and this a net figure in parayalo what is a net is equal to root of and then perpendicular alle ar and atm right so what is that equal to root of at square plus ar square at square plus ar square or you can substitute the values of at and ar also there at and the one like alpha r da ar and the omega square r da allengil v square by r so remember that ac and ar it's the same thing okay rendu njan maathi marcha kelidunnullu it's the same thing no difference fine so in a uniform circular motion nammal define cheyidathu centripetal force define cheyidu centripetal acceleration define cheyidu uniform circular motion nu parayumbod object was moving with, moving with the constant speed non uniform circular motion athiyapo the object is moving with the variable speed avada nammal at u define cheyidu alle appo non uniform la at um ar um parannu and the net acceleration also and what is a net is equal to root of at square plus ar square okay now circular motion la main ayada uniform non uniform nammal varu ini ivada orthu vekkanadha similar to a straight line motion circular motion la namaku equations of uh, motion define cheyam the only rotation dynamics in the chapter la parannadana for rotation dynamics you can refer to the link in the description okay so now linear equations a that is the first equation of motion v is equal to u plus at alle namaku ivide engena eludam omega is equal to omega 0 plus alpha t okay second equation of motion engena eludam theta s is equal to ut plus half t square alle theta is equal to omega 0 t plus half alpha t square and the third equation omega square minus omega not square is equal to 2 alpha theta and theta and the distance traveled by the body in the nth second at the angular this is equal to omega 0 plus alpha into n minus 1 by 2 but our four equations of motion um circular motion la namaku replicate kiya here omega final angular velocity omega not initial angular velocity alpha angular acceleration and d is a time taken okay deal now theta and d is angular displacement okay and uh, fourth second angle 4 fifth second angle 5 that is the value for n okay so all the equations of motion we can actually represent in circular motion also clear right now this is a basic idea behind circular motion now let's move on to some specific cases okay and the first one is motion in a vertical circle motion in a vertical circle motion in a vertical circle vertical circular motion now when you talk about vertical circular motion if you remember some standard results you can actually get all the results the desired ones that are needed for your examination okay now suppose an object is moving in a circular path and uh, suppose the initial velocity is u the initial velocity is u suppose it reaches over here and at this point the velocity is v the velocity is v now let me write here this is a height okay and we know this is a length and the total one is again l and let this angle be theta okay ab ivada act in the force in the gear that the gear g is there there is a tension here in this direction and this will be mg cos theta right theta and the theta and all right mg cos theta then we have one more thing towards the center and the center like all the portion board is centripetal force right it is our situation right now we have to find the velocity at this point if we are supposed to find the velocity at that point we can simply use this equation v square minus u square is equal to as so what do you get 
v is equal to root of u square plus 2g h. Now from this figure, h is equal to h. From this figure, we can find that h is actually equal to l into 1 minus cos theta. h is equal to l into 1 minus cos theta. This region is okay, Amadi. That will be clear for you. Now, substitute the value of h over here. And if we know the value of theta, we can actually find the velocity at that point. Okay. Now, on the screen right now, there are many points, many different angles, velocity on the trend. 0 is 90 is 90. 180 or 270. Okay, you can just apply it in the formula I have taught you and you can get all those things. Okay, now add the tension at a particular point. Okay, but tension can do the human. We force balance equation. Use it. We have loss of motion. Force balance equation. Use it. So from here, as you can see, we have a tension under you know, mg cos theta and there is a central petal force also, right. So we can write T T minus mg cos theta is actually equal to mv square by r. Or you can write T is equal to mg cos theta plus mv square by r. Then I will find the expression like you both. Why you know? Because V we already have an equation here. Alright. E V in the value we don't substitute the number of Tension in the term. At any point, tension, velocity, we can actually find out using this set of equations. Clear? In here, just a common case here. Let's do the common cases. Okay. On the other case, the minimum velocity needed at the four points. Now, the points A, B, C, D. Suppose the question is asked to you, what is the minimum velocity needed at the point A so that the object just completes a circular path? It just completes a circular path. Another question and angle, remember that the minimum velocity at this point should be root of phi gr. The velocity at this point should be root of 3 gr. And at this point is root gr. And at this point, symmetric to be root of 3 gr. But the minimum velocity required to complete the circular path on any part of the Okay? But I think it's not a question. Minimum velocity bottom root 5 gr, top pillar root gr, and side limb root of 3 gr. Okay? Done? Question is not a Right. Now, in a case, suppose the initial velocity, some conditions here on the screen you can't get under. Suppose the velocity is only root 2 gr. Suppose the velocity is only root 2 gr. Now root 2 gr on your third product the velocity angle. If I'm giving a velocity of root 2 gr, the object will just reach over here. Object will just reach over here. Then it comes back and it oscillates in a semicircular path. Okay? I mean, root 2 gr on your product velocity angle just reach over here. Object will reach over here. Suppose I'm giving a velocity in between that of root 2 gr and root 5 gr. If the end of the velocity, what happens is the object starts to move from here. Finally, if you have to move from here, you have to move from here. Now, if you have to move from here, what happens if you have to move from here? Move in a parabolic path. If you have to move from here, you have to move from here. You have to move from here. You have to move from here. Okay. But different conditions are again displayed on the screen. Please go through that. Alright. Fine. So please learn this one, motion in a vertical circle is a very important topic for you. Okay, now let's move on to the second special case and that is the, with respect to a hemisphere, what will happen. Okay. okay, now moving on to the next special condition and that is motion of a block on a frictionless hemisphere. Now, when a block is moving on a frictionless hemisphere, what happens? Let's see. Now initially the block is at this point. That point is at a height r from the ground and that is actually the radius of the hemisphere also, okay? Now, when the block is sliding down the hemisphere, what is happening is, at a certain point, it loses contact with the ground. But a particular point at the moment, it contact with the hemisphere, either. okay? He is losing contact at that particular point. And at that particular point, if there is no contact means, 
normal reaction should be equal to what? Zero. Conduct illengil normal reaction zero on a. So we can write, at this point there must be a potential energy MGR. Okay? Ab evade thubudho? There must be a potential as well as a kinetic energy. Because, evade yola potential energy yada uri bhaagam, evade yola kinetic energy yada maru. Ab evade the height in H yada 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 angle theta yada. So at this point we can write, it is MGH potential plus half M V square. So what do you get from here? We get in the written number, V is equal to root of 2G into R minus H. Now this point is velocity. Fine. In even then, we can actually make use of, even then we can actually make use of the force balance equation. Force balance equation you see in the written So more like a normal reaction in there. Then you take the component in there. This is theta. This will be theta. Right? So, you go to mg cos theta will be here. This is n. But n is 0 on the ground. Center like and then the center petal force zone. Doubt it all. So, based on the force balance equation now, already we have velocity array. Alright. So, based on that, we will get the value of height as 2 by 3 r. Above high and derivation, you can just write equation m minus mg cos theta is equal to m. That is minus mv square by r. So you can substitute and the values and you can get this equation. H is equal to 2 by 3 r. Okay. But height to 2 by 3 r. That is why you make an angle theta. The cos theta value will be corresponding to 2 by 3 again. The cos theta value in the body is losing contact from this hemispherical surface is given by cos theta is equal to 2 by 3. Cos theta and dana that is equal to 2 by 3. Okay. Samshil Allah. Clear. Alright. So let's move on to the next condition now and the last one. Okay now. The third condition is that of a conical pendulum. Now when a conical pendulum is moving, I have actually drawn my conical pendulum over here. When it is moving, it is actually moving in a horizontal circular path. As you can see, this is a ball. It is actually moving in a horizontal circular path. Okay. The bulb is moving in a horizontal circular path. And I have marked the radius over here. Radius of that circular path is R. And the height um, with respect to the center is given as H. Um, and now, from here, tension I have marked in the figure. And there will be a bleed Mg downwards. And correspondingly, the components of Mg can also be drawn. And written there. Now, based on this, I have found some expressions for this. I would prefer you guys to learn these equations by heart, okay? Because these are very important and this is a previous equation. So please do learn these equations. The first equation is that for a tension. The tension in the string when it is moving in a horizontal circular path. The tension is given by mg by cos theta. mg by cos theta. Theta is this angle. The angle made when it is moving in a horizontal path, okay? Or it can be written as mgl by L root of l square minus r square. L is actually the length of the string. L and dana, it is the length of this string. Okay. Now, tan theta. Tan theta is also written as v square by rg. Equation number familiar y. You have a banking in the curve path of the motion. Like the familiar y. Tan theta is equal to v square by rg. Now, the linear velocity of this bob is given by root of rg tan theta. Linear velocity is given by root of rg tan theta. We end up with t This is actually corresponding to the time period. You know what is time period? Already I am paranyu. End the time period. Right. So this t is actually corresponding to the time period. It is given by 2 pi root of h by r. Or is equal to 2 pi root of r by g tan theta. Okay, so time period is 2 pi root of h by r, and like that is equal to 2 pi root of r by g tan theta. Okay, with three equations, please make sure that you learn it. Now, if you have a derivative, you can actually get these equations. But preferably, learn those equations by that. Okay, so we have a circular motion almost all the time. We have to add ons to the Please do comment below, and your suggestions are always welcome. Okay, and if you like the video, give us a thumbs up, and please subscribe to the channel Basis Physics Classroom.